experience in, in non adventist educational settings, but I'm, I'm guessing that there would be a whole range of factors that we could identify that might have to do, you know, with factors inside the community here that might push people out. Also with the fact that consciousness raising happens on Adventist campuses as well as non-Adventist ones, and some people, you know, may take that and move it outside the community. And then there's just the influences in the wider culture that uh, it's pretty hard, I think, in a place like this to really insulate uh, people against uh, over long periods. Uh, but in any event, I think, uh, yeah, when I think about the people I know well, that yeah, seventy five percent probably you know, have dropped out. They have dropped out or at least every ten years Yeah, after that. getting so, like a yeah. PhD and so or just or heading or out to work. Yeah, you know. or get heading out to work. Interesting. So what's kept you seventh day Adventists? Um yeah, I'm sure there are lots of different things, uh, but one thing I'd say is that this community is a community where I have found it possible to be Adventist while exploring and continuing to grow personally and intellectually and culturally um, in a way that I, you know, might not have in, in some other settings. I mean, I, I think there's just a lot of people uh, here who want to nurture and be supportive uh, when uh, uh, friends and colleagues and students and so forth are, are exploring and growing. Uh, and so I think that there's a level of uh, nurture and support that makes it possible uh, to spread one's wings a bit here. And so I think I've stayed Adventist because I could here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, and I'm grateful to uh, the, the teachers and don't feel like um, asking questions or pushing the envelope in various ways is uh, something that uh, you know my faculty colleagues uh, are, are interested in punishing uh, rather I think they're interested in, in learning from that. So. Mm -hmm. so what did you study in grad school? Um, well, I guess, so, I first went to grad school um, outside of Adventism at what's now Claremont Graduate University um, and uh, started there in a program in the philosophy of religion and theology. And then I ended up finishing uh, my doctoral work at the University of Cambridge in England where, again, I, I worked in, in Christian ethics and theology and the philosophy of religion. And then I went back to school uh, seven years after I finished my PhD to get a law degree at UCLA uh, where I tried to focus as little as possible on uh, uh, probably the practice of law and again focused either on, on the philosophy of law or on law and public policy and constitutional law kinds of issues. So, you know, at different points, I, you know, the, the degrees that I've got are either in, in theology or law and then there's a lot of philosophy mixed in there. So you did a law degree as well? Yeah. How did you like that? Um, I think the way you reason in law is very similar to the way you reason uh, in, in philosophy and theology. And so for me, as somebody who'd been interested in law and politics for years, my undergrad degree was in history and political science, I was fascinated by that and uh, had uh, been interested in uh, studying stuff related to law for a long time. Uh, and uh, I don't know what other law school environments are necessarily like, but UCLA was a great place where uh, met uh, great uh, classmates and uh, great teachers and uh, uh, found my horizons expanded. And, you know, actually a lot of the academic work that I've done uh, in recent years uh, has been uh, really somewhere at the intersection of law and philosophy. And I've certainly done some stuff in theology recently, but uh, a lot of my work has been, been legal. So when you were a kid, what did you plan to be when you grew up? Um, I suppose there must have been some point at which I uh, imagined uh, 
doing medicine like my dad. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, there was, you know, I think I had vague ideas of being involved in politics probably when I was in junior high, the beginning of high school. I think when I discovered high school as a kind of community environment that I hadn't uh, experienced in elementary school, I felt like I belonged a lot more. I started thinking about high school teaching. Uh, I could be part of this environment uh, over the long term. And then when I got to college, it hit me that university teaching might be more appealing. And uh, uh, so I originally, I think, as an undergrad, thought I was going to be an academic, probably in the area of political philosophy. And then partway through my undergrad experience doing history, I figured out I was very interested in theology. And so that's why I headed that direction in grad school. Uh, I spent time after finishing the PhD really unclear on what I was going to do because I just didn't seem to be getting the kind of academic uh, job opportunities that I wanted. And so that's why I went back to law school. Uh, but uh, fortunately that didn't ultimately lead to a completely different career path and instead it just uh, did what I sort of hoped it would do, which was to expand my academic options. And uh, so of course now I have ended up with an academic position. I kind of look at my dad as a sort of rock star of Seventh Day Adventist life. Yeah, I think that's fair. Who, um, who are the rock stars of Seventh Day Adventist life? You know, it's hard for me to say that now, as Adventism is much more fragmented, there are uh, people who play that role as obviously. Um, I think, you know, even a quarter century ago when. Uh, you know, your dad got so much public attention. I think Adventism, certainly in you know English-speaking Adventism, I think was a good deal more cohesive. Uh, maybe that's just an excuse for my not being able to think of obvious people. But um, so well, I'll, it's it's. I mean, I would see my dad get mobbed. Mm -hmm. You know, wherever he'd yeah. go, if he was, people would like swarm him. Sure. Um, particularly, Seventh Day Adventists do have a very high percentage of what my brother would call nutters. I mean, people, <laughs> you know, just get off on eschatology and sure. you know, just like conspiracy theorists. Sure. And just, sure. Just, I mean, because it's an eschatological religion. Right. And uh, but yeah, I would see my dad, and people would be swarming him. You know, the same way that someone, not quite the same way as Britney Spears is swarmed, but still. You know, when you walk into a room, there's one person there that everyone wants to right, talk to. Right, right. Like, I've, I've gone to parties where there was Martin Amos, the novelist, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, who wrote God is Not Great? Chris Hitchens. And Chris Hitchens. Okay, mm -hmm. I went to one party with both of them. They were rock stars. They sure. were mobbed. Everyone sure. wanted to hang out and talk with sure. them. Sure. Uh, so my dad was a rock star, and I'm trying to think, like, uh, it's, it's the controversial, high-profile speakers. I right. think speaking... It's the eloquent speakers who are the rock stars of Seventh Day Adventist life. What do you think of that theory? The people who can move vast audiences. Well, I think that's a theoretical uh, account of it that certainly captures what what mattered uh, where your dad was concerned. Yeah. And I think that's clear. Uh, you know, uh, I, mean, I think somebody who is obviously just a tremendously gifted communicator. Um, very quick thinker who, who therefore can impress people both, uh, as not everybody can, with be, both with rhetorical flourishes yeah. and with, with intellectual firepower. And I think that's certainly, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that does impress Adventists. But, I, you know, I don't know. Who could, who could pack a hall right now somewhere in Southern California? Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm just not sure that I can think of somebody uh, who's... Who can make yeah. people cry? Yeah, yeah. No, I think like that's... Craig Smuts Van Royen? You, you, you yeah, but uh, sure, I sure. But, where, I don't know what's happened with the last Yeah, well, you, you know, Smuts... I remember he was a pretty powerful speaker oh, when I was a kid. Oh, Smuts is an excellent speaker, and I you know, actually know quite where he is. You know, he was pastoring out here uh, for a long time. You know, he, he was sort of rehabilitated and uh, mm -hmm. was pastoring both in Glendale and in Riverside. Um, but I'm... I'm embarrassed that I don't know where Smuts is now. Certainly for people who are aware of him, he would probably bring a fairly large crowd out, and certainly he could he could make them cry. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I have a but 